Justin Rob with the Florida Diver, and today we are at Itch and Tuckney Springs for a little bit of cavern diving. Okay, first things first. There is a long walk to get to the Blue Hole, aka Jug Hole. It's a spring vent located in Itchen Tuckney Springs, which is just out of High Springs, Florida. Having a wagon to pull your gear is a must, but the trail remains difficult. There are tons of unavoidable tree roots throughout the walk. The wheels in my wagon were bent badly, and I was lucky just to have made it to the car after the dive. For nearly 30 minutes of walking, we reached the spring vent, and it looks awesome. We start our dive descending straight down the blue hole vent into the first room of the cavern. Depths average 35 to 40 feet. Next, we will squeeze our way into the main cavern with a strong flow that increases velocity as it's forced through the restriction. After exploring, we will stop at the cave entrance, our skills and equipment preventing us from going any further. Lastly, we turn the dive and let the current help us exit the same way we entered completing a safety stop in a small corner to stay out of the high flow. Right from the very beginning you will be against a high flow, making it hard to descend. We do our best to stay away from the walls of the vent. They contain red clay, which gives it a very unique look, but can be damaged by people grabbing onto them. This is the first room to explore, and wow, those sun rays are beautiful. Now it's time to slide into the main cavern. This small portion of the dive takes a few minutes to pass. The water is moving extremely fast and we take our time with a couple of rest stops. Once you're on the other side, the current is much easier to tolerate and adds only a slight challenge to the dive. The water swirled around the room in unpredictable ways. I wasn't ever sure which way it was going to nudge me. There is an abundance of catfish in this cavern. Large groups would gather in the small cracks along the bottom. The floor of the cavern is covered in sand, small rocks, and shells. It can briefly be stirred up, but quickly settles back to the bottom. The fast-moving water prevents silt and small sediments from building up on the rock. Near the back wall, you may see a sign reflecting in the distance. 
This informs divers to stop unless they have cave training. Not far beyond this sign, there will be no more natural light coming in from the surface. With only a flashlight and no reference to the exit, walls and passages may start to look the same, leaving a diver to feel lost or disoriented. Something I like to do when I encounter this sign is to turn off my lights and admire the natural light glowing in the distance. I would recommend keeping one light on and pointing it away from you, just for some added safety. It would be a bummer if your lights didn't turn back on. Beware of the monsters that lurk in the dark. Isn't she great? We exit the restriction carefully, using some logs to help slow us down. It feels like you're inside of a garden hose and the water is pushing you out. I show my buddies where I will complete my safety stop and slowly ascend, being careful to stay out of the current so I'm not expelled to the surface. When leaving the vent, be prepared to control your ascent. Monica dumped all the air in her BCD and still uses her hands to slow down. One last shot of this beautiful view and I exit too. Thank you for tagging along with us. If you want to see more adventures, be sure to like or subscribe. Happy diving.